Welcome out to the range. Today we have with us some RTS Tactical rifle rated plates. A couple different carriers that we acquired. They're not a sponsor of this channel. We went out and got these and we've had a lot of fans asking us to do some review and some talking about rifle plate carriers and other types of body armor. Today we're going to do just plate carriers which normally are just for rifle type plates versus the soft body armor that law enforcement wears in their tack vests or load bearing vests and so on. So with that, we have a 10 by 12 size one today. And this one is their HST quick release plate carrier in Ranger Green. Now it does fit me. We're not gonna get into why a guy my size would need plate carriers and whether I could even move if I put them on. That's all for you guys to do in the comments. That being said, it has quick release here, quick release here, so you can get your body armor off if you were to take around, somebody else needs to get your body armor off or it's just you just want to get it off quickly. There you go. It does take a little bit to get it put back together, so I would suggest having it assembled before you try to put it back together, but when you're wearing it, it takes just a little bit in learning their system. There you go, back together. All right. The plates we have are three plus rated rifle plates, ceramic, that come in, I wanna say about five pounds each. Again, the, this carrier is for the 10 by 12 size. This carrier is by the 11 by 14 size. You need to know what's gonna look best, feel best, cover you the best. Um, obviously this one kind of looks like a postage stamp. I know I don't have it on right. Okay, it's a little small for a guy my size. This one, if I put it on, works better. This is their OPSEC, sorry, get the right tip. OPSEC, Advanced Quick Release Plate Carrier in gray, obviously. Now, both carriers have really nice padded shoulder pads. This, the whole strap is padded. These have tabs, make the whole strap padded. Has molly type attachment stuff up here. Webbing, you can put it on for sure. Same thing. So you could put all kinds of gear all over both of these, front and back. There you go. It has a drag handle for your long drag handle so that they can get you out of harm's way, maybe behind a shield, whatever, not have to crouch down. So that's a little bit different than this drag handle, which is just this, okay? So got my camera operator helping me recover my equipment here. All right. <coughs> it also has quick release, pull it apart. This one is a little different in the fact that it has these straps on the inside also to help keep it in place and size it and keep it to you. The inside has nice padding. So if you were to take a hit, I'm very confident the round's not going through that. It's not denting it. We will get to shooting it here in a little while. But you do have some padding on the inside for that impact you're bound to take if you do end up taking a hit. The other unique one to this is that it has this quick detach, well, not quite quick, but a detachable front so if you need to change out magazines were here and you need to change out for medical gear, whatever you think you need another one of these for, you can easily put it back on here with whatever different gear, put it back together and away you go. Now, this is a review. It's very heavy stuff. We're not gonna want to destroy these and shoot these. So we do have the plates set somewhere else. I don't want this to sound too much like a commercial. Again, they're not a sponsor. We acquired this stuff for you guys, the viewers, because you've been asking about it. It just happens to be these are the brands. This is what we're reviewing today. We'll show you here in a little bit. We've got some targets set up over here. They also got us a shield. So it's the small shield. Doesn't cover much. Watch their commercials as to what they believe the small shield would be. But it's the same material as the bigger shields. They make them in three different sizes. We have one we're going to shoot. Again, it's 
three plus rated for rifle, which means it should stop ball 308 or 7.62 by 51 NATO, should stop the M855, so the green tip penetrator type 556 five, rounds, should stop ball 556. Five, so your heavy common calibers, it should stop up to those and anything below that. Now, we brought out a little bit bigger stuff today, see if we can put them, the equipment to the test. And I might even take and see what would happen if you put a magazine on the front of this stuff and shoot the magazine and whether it goes through the plate, whether the magazine blows up, because very common it is to put your magazines on the front of your plate carrier so you can get to them quickly. So we might even do that for you today. So let us get set up, reset the camera and so on, and we'll get back with you. Okay, so we've got our Winchester model, 88 308 Winchester, loaded up with five rounds of ball M80 308 Winchester or military designation is 7.62 by 51 and this is ball ammo. So we're going to go back here about 25 yards and we're going to shoot the body armor. All right so we have our three plus rifle rated plate ceramic sitting here against a rubber human torso and it's on a stand that moves a little bit. We're going to go back here. We're going to shoot it, see what if we can show what may happen. Now, I have no doubt this plate is going to perform just like it's supposed to. I'd be shocked if it doesn't. We also have, just off camera, a shield rated the same way. It's the RTS small shield, but it tests the same way. And it's set up to see if we can get any of the, if there's any splash or bullet fragmentation, etc., when it hits the shield and stops. We're going to cut real quick. We're going to reset the camera so you can see them both. And we're going to go back here. All right, so we've got the plate torn off our torso. Hopefully you saw that it didn't knock the torso down, it rocked it a little bit. That's because this plate did, as I'm guessing it's designed, to take most of the impact. And if you got a good view from the side, it's the one here is probably at least an inch in toward the body. The body would be here. This is your strike face. Now, you can see that it put a cavity in the strike face. There's a hole behind this one, hole behind this one. That's three rounds. Now, if you were silly enough to stand there and get shot three times right in the chest, well, that's what the results would be. Did it stop the round? Heck yes, it stopped the round. It did like it was supposed to do. We had a couple little just flattened out pieces from the shield. So does the body armor work? Yes. And again, that was with the 7.62 M80 ball ammo out of about a 24 inch just lever action rifle. If you look here, this is a lot more dented than I was expecting from all the vi other videos I've seen, to be honest with you. Now it's not caved in. It didn't really, I mean, it, it barely dented on the inside. We didn't tear it apart to, to look, but it is, dented, but not terrible. What I am surprised about is where the fragments from the bullet went to. So the shoot and seize, you can see, are torn up. So if you're the poor guy that's beside the shield man, you're going to get some shrapnel. Same thing over here. It went through this cardboard, which is just a normal cardboard box. It's just, that's how thick it is. It's just normal cardboard box. But it was going in enough velocity, it shotgun blasted this. Now, we don't know if it went up because it was this way, but it, we can see 
as high as that. So the impacts are here. It came up, same thing, came up. So if you're, again, the guy beside the shield, you're gonna get splattered. If you're a guy holding the shield and your other arm's exposed, you're gonna get splattered. You're not gonna get, hopefully, killed. The shield's gonna do its job. The shield did its job. But that energy and all that fragmentation has to go somewhere. And we can see here, hopefully, you can see where it all went to. Again, this shield, sorry, the body armor panel plate did what it was supposed to. You are gonna have some stuff, so that's why the padding on the inside of the carriers. Obviously, this plate is done for. They are multiple hits. We shot it three times. It would take others in different spots, but eventually these ceramic ones are gonna fall apart. So we're gonna reset, shoot it with a different caliber, see what kind of results we can get with that. Just ball ammo, nine by 19 out of the M17. Nine millimeter ball ammo. Here's a hit, no indentation. Well, that's not true. There's a very, very slight indentation and it went through the coating. Couple more rounds, same results. But again, we have some shrapnel coming off this way. Surprisingly, nothing went that way. Could be how we're hanging the shield today. All right, so let's move over to the torso. Nine millimeter, nine millimeter. Looking at the backside, Believe it or not, there is a little bit, just a little bit, maybe a quarter inch of, I don't know the right word for you folks, but indentation on the backside or expansion into where you would be. So there you go. Um, we're gonna go shoot it with the 223 slash 556 NATO now and see what results we get for you there. 556, 62 grain penetrator out of a 16 inch barrel AR platform. Let's go look at the results. So it's gonna be hard to see on the camera, but there's very minor, I guess, obtrusion or coming into your body with the 223 it hit here. Same results as with the 308 on a smaller scale in the 7.62 by 51 for the rest of you. So on a smaller scale. So less damage to the actual plate, less intrusion into your area, um, stopped them all, no, nothing came through, so it performed exactly like it's supposed to do. Now we've shot this with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight rounds of various calibers, and it's still stopping them and doing what it's supposed to. Great product so far. 223, 556, 62 grain penetrator. That one, and this one, and this one I think, uh, either way, did what it's supposed to. Very, very little indentation on the plate itself. But again, and we're going to address this in a minute, the shrapnel, I'll call it, that came off of the targets might do you some damage or the buddy next to you. So we're going to get a new plate and up our game just a little bit and see what we can do. Now, 12 gauge, one ounce, high base slugs out of a 20 inch model 870.
Well, we don't need to do more than one of those. So, just for fun, we shot it with a 12 gauge, one ounce rifled slug. You can see that it did have some impact. No more than the 308 slash 7.62 by 51. A little bit here. You saw what happened to our dummy and how much he rocked, so I'm not sure you'd want to be wearing it, but I do believe you wouldn't have any broken bones or anything like, especially if you had soft body armor and the slug is still in here flattened out. We only shot this once. I believe this is the impact. I've torn off the little rubberized coating to it. It's just a coating. It didn't have any more uh, denting to it than definitely not any more, not even close to what the 308 did to it. Um, maybe the 556, but it, it threw out a lot of shrapnel. Of course, keep in mind, slugs are soft lead, so you're going to get a lot of shrapnel. And it did ring its bell pretty good. No pun intended, because it likes to ring when you hit it. So, does it stop it? You bet. Are you going to feel it when you get hit? You bet. But at least you're going home at the end of the day. So we got one more caliber we're going to try, and let's get to it. Remington, green and yellow box, 180 grain, 30-06, round soft point. I guess we'll stop here. There. And I guess we'll stop there. Let's go look at what we did. All right, why did the plate fall? Well, we're guessing because it shattered the buckle on the back side. There is a hole right here, through and through, right to here. 180 grain, 30-06 round nose, soft point, green and yellow box. This plate now is not rated to stop those rounds. You need the level four plates to stop 30-06. This one's only rated up to the 7.62 by 51 ball ammo. And it does a beautiful job doing what it's rated to do. So that aside, we'll set that down there. This is, I mean, it's hard to see from that side, turn it another angle. The OT-6 bulged out a lot, but it did not go through. So, good news. Even though it's not rated for it, and even though it put a heck of a dent towards your body, it didn't go through it. And I don't think this is enough, again, I'm sorry, I don't know the right word for it, guys, enough indentation toward you to go through the padding of the carrier, the RTS ones especially, and then do break bones and other damage in your body. Yes, it's going to hurt. We know that. And of course, we got almost, well, going back to the shield, even when it went through, we got a little bit of bullet spray, etc. Um, we're not sure exactly what that is. That's just rub marks from us, I think. But there's some good sized chunks that would have hit something. So, one more time, we're done with shooting the plates. We're gonna do a wrap up on this, go over our uh, results a little bit, and end the day for you. When you're shooting targets like this with different calibers, there's several factors that go into it. Not just what caliber it is, but also which manufacturer, barrel length, the design of the rifle. So there's things that go into it other than just the specifics of caliber. But the one observation I have is that in this particular case, this is one time where you cannot say that a 308 is just as powerful as a 30 out 6 All right, that's all I've got. With that, obviously, again, not rated, but it went right through. I don't have a pen small enough to show, poke a hole through her for you. 
one more educational thing before we do a wrap up. Well, the handle's a little bit, hmm, the bolts came loose in the process also. So I don't want your equipment falling apart. Now, if you have been shield trained, and I have, not, I'm not a SWAT guy or anything else, I've just taken some classes, folks. Holding the shield similar to this, and there's another video out where the guy's shooting like this around a shield. Imagine if I'm shooting like this and the round hits and all that shrapnel comes off, it's going to slice my arm. Maybe it's time we rethink how we're going to use a shield, especially a rifle rated shield that we know is going to have a whole bunch of shrapnel. If it hits your breaker artery, that's a bad day for you and you aren't going to care if you have a shield anymore. If it hits your other people in the face or the neck or whatever, even more of a bad day. So all those guys that are out there training and stuff, please take that in consideration. Now you can see that this coating, it didn't stop anything. It's great, it keeps it from getting rusty and all that, but it didn't stop any of that shrapnel or bullet fragments coming off there. Now, the, round, the shield did do exactly what it was supposed to do. And even though I can pull the back apart here a little bit now, there is no uh, indentation into uh, I, the, the 7.62 rounds do have just maybe a half inch indentation through the body of the shield. Nothing that would go through your pad. So great news that way, great design. This shield obviously I think is a little small for going into buildings and things with, but they make bigger ones, keep that All right. Now, 30-06 on this last plate. You can see it had a lot of indentation into your body area, but it's not rated to stop that. It did stop it, that round did not go through here. As far as the product's concerned, almost no fragmentation coming off of the shield because, or I'm sorry, the plate, because it is ceramic and it hits it inside and it stays there. There are the slugs in here now. The other bullets are in there, well, or flattened on the ground. So ceramic might be the way to go. It's thicker, obviously, than steel. I'm not sure it's any heavier, but if you are look, I mean, I can only imagine in even your plate carrier, if you got shot and you had steel plates, what would happen versus the ceramic that is designed to absorb some of that. That being said, great products. Hope you learned something today, especially to my fellow law enforcement people out there. Go out, practice with, train with, so you are the best prepared for the worst case situations.